Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. We're going to go through some more iOS pen testing stuff. In this video, we're going to cover some binary protection detection, I guess, and how we go about figuring out what protections a binary has and what those protections sort of relate to. So we're going to use two things for this. We're going to use objection. We're going to use mobile security framework or MobSF for short. So MobSF is a really great tool that you should use on most sort of iOS or Android pen tests. It gives you a lot of information about the application, the strings that it's found, uh, the packages that are used, the functions that are used. Overall, it's a great sort of security tool. Recommend it quite highly. Um, it's not sort of the be all and end all of a pen test, but it, it does help with that sort of initial step. To download it, I, I'm on Linux. I'm sure you can run it on Windows as well. But there's a GitHub page called github.com slash mobsf. And in there, you can just do a git clone. I think it has a Docker repository as well, or a Docker container as well. But all I want to do is go into my terminal and I want to just git clone the repository. Let that do its thing. And then we'll install the dependencies, run the application. And we'll import our iOS app, which in our case is the DVIAV2 application. I know it's been a long time since I've done anything on iOS. I've sort of taken a break from YouTube for a long time. And then I got back and I started doing other things. But I want to get back into it. I wanted to do a CTF style video. But unfortunately, the CTF that I was going to do actually got taken down by the by the owner, by the by the creator. So unfortunately, I couldn't do that. So I'm going to go through a couple more videos of the DVIA testing sort of methodology that I have. I'm going to cover the binary protection in this video, and then I'm going to move on to things like cross-site scripting or web view exploits in general. All right, so that's, that's, that's downloaded, that's cloned. So let's CD into that. And we can run the setup script as the root user. In fact, firstly, I need to install Python. Okay, now we've got Python installed. We want to go back and do the setup script. So we just run the setup script as root and it will go through and it'll install everything we need, except it won't install virtual environment. So that's fine. We can just do that as an, uh, as an apt, apt get or apt install. And it's Python 3.9 apparently, uh, vn. Once that's installed, we can go back and we'll run the script again and hopefully it'll go through it and, and fix all the problems that it had. Let's go up and, and try that again. Okay, great. So that's all done. And we can just do run the dot uh, the the run.sh script and I think that spawns a server on port 8000. So once this is run we can go back to our browser and we can go to localhost uh, 8000. Yep and we just click upload and analyze. And we can go to our downloads and we can use the dvia v2.ipa file. What will happen here is it will upload and you can see on the terminal, you've got some stuff going on in the background. It is processing it. It's doing what, well, you know, it's doing its sort of checks and it's, it's decompilations and things, at least to the best that it can. And then we'll get a nice report on the, on the web application in a minute. There we go. Good. So we go back to here and you can see in here that it's got a few options. It tells you up here about what the application is built with and what, what the sort of hashes are of it. It also tells you a security score. I don't really pay much attention to that. The security scores never, never tends to correlate with the actual security of the application. But we can see things like the info, uh, we can see things like the plist files. If you don't know what a plist file is, I did make a video on it previously, so go and check that out. But in here, you can see the sort of default stuff that it's got in here. Again, you can you can dump the strings of the application. 
this is sort of out of scope of this video. And then you can see the class dump file. Um, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. I have had issues with this in the past. Okay, it did work. So there are there is a class dump file here and you can see all the classes. So if we look for something like jailbreak in here, there we go. We can see that there's a jailbreak detection class with the with the method of is jailbroken. Anyway, moving on, we have got things like any permissions that the application uses. Sometimes these permissions are custom permissions and sometimes they're sort of default to the operating system. So things like the camera usage and, and whatnot. It, Flags it as dangerous if it considers obviously the uh, if it considers the permission to be dangerous or to be potentially dangerous, and it tells you about the app security tra uh, app transport security, which is sort of similar to the HTTP strict transport security. It will force things to be loaded over HTTPS or a, a TLS connection, and then we've got some sort of binary checks. Now again, these functions here, it flags all the time, but they're not necessarily bad. I will make another video on how to use OTool to figure out whether they are potentially dangerous or not. But what we're looking for is the IPA binary analysis. So this tells us what sort of flags and, and security mechanisms the IPA or the binary has in place. So we can see here that it's been compiled with ARC, it's got a code signature, it's not encrypted. It's got the NX bit set, which means you can't execute sort of shellcode on the stack. It's got Pi enabled. It doesn't have R path. There, there is a stack canary. And the symbols have not been stripped. So you can debug the application, which we could probably do in another video. So that's one way of figuring out what sort of security the, the application has. And the other one I wanted to show was using objection. Let's see if we have objection installed. We don't, so let's install it using pip. So let's run Frida again, there we go. Anyway, what we actually want to look for is this one here. So we've got the name of it and we can use objection to hook into that and we run explore again i have done a few other videos before explaining what objection is and how it works and sort of the not in and outs of it but it i i have explained sort of how it's used but we can do irs and if we do it just to a tab you can see the options that you have here And we can run iOS info on the binary. And in here, we get the same thing as we did previously. So here are the binaries that it's found in the sort of IPA package. And you can see that the, this, the, the, the type that explains which app is going to be launched rather than which one's just a, a dialib. The flags are all here. So you've got pi arc, canary, stack, ex the NX flag, root safe, and whether it's encrypted or not. We know that these are the same as the ones that we had over from MobSF, and it gives us the same values here. So that's how you figure out how or whether the application has these flags set. I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of these flags by all means have a google if not i know a couple of youtubers that do sort of more pwn based videos for example crypto cat who does a lot of pwn videos he's really good go check him out he explains what the nx flag and the pi flags are so i'd recommend going to check his videos out and he can probably explain it a lot better than i can um nevertheless if you've enjoyed the video if you've learned something please drop me a like Follow the channel or say I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers sort of by the middle of this year. I will be doing more iOS pen testing stuff, more pen testing videos. We're going to we're going to move on from this video and we're going to go to the web view issues. We're going to try and get cross-site scripting on the app and see if we can launch a third-party application using the cross-site scripting. And then we're going to try and figure out if we can do another CTF. There is we're also going to do another video on sensitive information in the memory. So we're going to dump the memory of the application and see if there's any sort of interesting strings or anything that we can do with it, do some memory analysis on it. But yeah, 
for this video, that's everything. If you liked it, drop me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone.